Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in again and out here in the tackle room late at night. Uh, for today's tip, actually it'll be in the daytime when you see this, but I'm doing it late at night. And I was, hey, I was going to give everybody a, a quick uh, update on my dad. I know a lot of people have been asking about him. I really appreciate the concern. And man, I it's just like I'm, gonna, I'm getting now where it's like I'm getting to know everybody so good. A lot of the regular subscribers, you guys are starting to feel like family to me. So I appreciate all the well wishes and uh, it's uh, uh, much appreciated. So yeah, he's uh, still in the hospital. Uh, it's, it looks like he's probably gonna be in there about another week. Um, he's gonna have to have some type of a heart cath, a heart cath tomorrow because he had a little minor heart attack earlier in the week. So hopefully, you know, he'll get through all that. We can get him into some rehab, get him back up on his feet again and get back to the house. So. Uh, Anyway, thanks again for everybody's concern. Much appreciated. And I've been spending a lot of going actually back and forth to Joplin every single day. So uh, it's uh, actually, you know, really looking forward to him getting better on that. So anyway, today's tip I'm going to give you guys, I've been getting a lot of requests uh, from subscribers on how to tie skirts for jigs or spinner baits. Um, you guys know that if you've watched the channel very long, you know that I tie all my skirts and jigs. I think it's one of the most important skills that you can learn as an angler because the thing about once you get good at tying skirts and once you understand different color combinations, you can match whatever you're doing to the situation right on the water. You know, as far as water clarity changes, sky condition changes, I keep this full kit that I'm going to show you guys in the boat with me at all time. And I tie jigs and spinnerbait skirts all the time, even in tournaments. In the middle of tournaments, I'll, I'll get down there and, and tie up a skirt. So, in my opinion, it's one of the most valuable things that you can learn as far as a skill set. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take you guys through from start to finish how I tie a jig or tie a skirt for a spinnerbait or jig. And I'll explain to you why I do it and what I'm looking for in the skirt. So, first of all, I'll show you guys my skirt kit here. Uh, here it is. It's uh, I've got tons. You can't see it, but I got tons in there. I've got all the silicone, different silicone colors here. You know, it's basically different colors for uh, jigs or spinner baits. You know, depending upon what I'm looking. I've got dark. I've got light. Um, I've got the collars here. I've got live rubber here. If I want to tie some live rubber, um, so got a little bit of everything to match the situation. So anyway, before we get started on this. Um, I'm going to show you guys how to tie <clears throat> a two and a half layer skirt and under normal conditions that's what I tie a lot of times. Two and a half skirt layers normally gives me the the bulk of the bait, that, the bulk of the uh, look that I want on a jig or a spinner bait. Now if I'm throwing <clears throat> like a finesse type jig or maybe a, fin a smaller spinner bait like a quarter ounce, <clears throat> excuse me, um, sometimes I'll go to two layers that makes a little skirt that's just a little bit thinner skirt. And sometimes if I want a really big bulky profile bait, whether it's be a full size jig or like a big one ounce spinner bait, I'll use three full strands. But it, for today's application, I'm going to show you guys two and a half strands. So anyway, the first thing you have to do is get you guys a good skirt tie, skirt tying tool like this. I've had this thing forever, man. This has been around forever, but this is one of the, this is going to be your main workhorse here as far as for tying the skirts. Um, and like I said, it's, uh, it's invaluable to have, you got to have it to tie it right. First thing I do is to take my rubber skirt collar. You know, I use clear and I use black both. Um, most of the time I'll, I try to match up if I'm tying it, you know, a jigs like with darker colors, I'll throw the black or use the black and then I'll clear on the, on the lighter color ones. I'll put it on like that and then, uh, open the, uh, it's got a little catch like that that catches onto it. So I've got my skirt layer complete there. Okay, the next thing I do is I want to get my layers together. So in this case, I'm going to use two and a half. So I've got one. And then normally what I have is I want how you place the skirt layers has a lot to do with how the skirt looks or how the, yeah, the skirt looks. So what you want to do is you want to have your primary color on the outside and your secondary colors on the inside. So for example, if I'm wanting, you know, a chartreuse looking, you know, uh, jig or, or a spinner bait, you know, I'm putting that on the outside. I'm putting my secondary color on the inside. And then I come back on the outside backside with my other, 
primary color. In this case, it's a half skirt layer on the back there. So I've got two and a half layers on that. Next thing I do is I just thread it through there and uh, try to get this here and pull it through. And this is, here's the critical part guys, what you want to do is when you pull it through there, you know, a lot of guys pull it halfway through like that. You don't want to do that because if you pull it halfway through like that, it will not set correctly on your jig or your spinner bait. It'll make the, the, it'll be too long on one side. So what I like to do is I basically only come through about not even a quarter, just about like that. So I've got a long strand up there and a quarter like that. I'll release the uh, band there. And so the skirt looks like that. You can see how much longer that is. Then I'll take my scissors, cut off the ends of them on both ends. And then another thing you'll have to do on a lot of these skirts is sometimes the, the skirts will get tangled up together. Sometimes, uh, not tangled, but sometimes they won't separate when you uh, cut them. So you have to go through there and pick apart any ones. Like, see that one right there? This, this one right here? This one's sort of caught together. So what you have to do is you have to manually peel it apart. And this is really critical to do that because you want every skirt strand to be intact like it needs to be. It just gives it better action. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do, and as you can see here, how much that, is I'm gonna, use, I'm gonna put it on a jig just for this example. Flip it up where the long side is on top, like that. Long side up, and I'm gonna go in with my jig. Make sure it's all uniform with that. and pull it up on there and then once you once you pull it up on there it's gonna it's not gonna be evenly distributed so the, the important thing you want to do is once you pull it up on there take some time and really get it distributed evenly where you have an equal amount of skirt material all over the jig particularly around the hook part there spinnerbait or jig so I'm dressing it up, I pull it apart. This is the time when I come in through there and I make sure all my strands are pulled apart. I don't have any that are stuck together like that. And what this does is it creates me, when, it, when you tie it like this, when you tie it short, like I told you, it creates a long skirt. And this is, and it, it creates a short skirt, a short part underneath it, but it, it creates a long outer part. And I, this is what I want here because what happens is I can come back through here and this allows me to cut the skirt length to match whatever trailer that I'm using. Say for example, if I'm using a long pork frog style, tra style trailer that hangs down, I can keep it longer. Or if I'm using a shorter uh, trailer that I'm threading up on it, you know, I can cut it down. So normally I'll come through there and I cut different lengths. I come up and I'll cut through the middle of it. See how that one flared out right there? That's what you want. You don't want any type of uniformity on this skirt. So I'm coming through there and I've got a lot of different uh, skirt lengths, you know, sort of crazy looking like that. And that's, the, that's desired, what you want to do. So that's basically how I do it there, guys, like that. You know, it's just... Uh, it's basically a matter of feel once you practice it you know you can really get good you can really get quick at it and uh <clears throat> gives you and it not only will allow you to match the situation that you're in as far as water clarity and sky condition changes but when you can tie your own skirts it gives you a tremendous amount of confidence that you're doing something that somebody else isn't doing because you can come up with skirt creations that you know are not factory nobody can buy them off the shelf and that to me gives me a huge confidence boost. And I've created some wild colors before because the thing about, you know, spinnerbait and jig colors is there, nobody says you have to use black and blue or white and chartreuse all the time. You can use craziest colors, come up with something new, use your imagination, use your, your creativity. And that's the great thing about having your own skirt tying to get. Now, live rubber is a different story because when I tie live rubber, I use a combination of a rubber band and twine, and I'll show you guys that in a later video. 
Um, it's a little bit more complicated, but like I said, learning sk skirt time guys is fundamental, man. If you guys want to be, become a lot better anglers, I highly suggest get investing in a good skirt tying, tying kit with a lot of different skirt layers. You can buy them in a lot of different places around the country. Um, a lot of good different type of uh, thicknesses out there for you to choose from. Just a really good way to, to up your fishing and everything. So anyway, I hope you guys learned something out of that tip. You know, I have no doubt in my mind it will help you catch more fish, build your confidence, uh, and, you know, you'll just be able to match your jigs and your spinner base to the situations a lot better. So anyway, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it. Uh, if you guys haven't subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. Give it a like. Be much appreciated. And we'll be back soon with another one. See ya.